it's like print doesn't really get very much or pretty much uh, attention anymore. It's almost like print isn't very fashionable or very sexy anymore. But was print ever sexy? I don't think it's. Uh, and in this in this new world, the medium of distribution is meaningless. I mean, media defines itself as being the pipes that feed it. But we as consumers, we don't. As far as we're concerned as consumers, we want our content where, when, and, and how we want it, wrapped up in a vehicle that we can digest easily. And this is, this is a problem with print. If, if you look, give me an example. Supposing we have an article which is published in a magazine, and we have the same article available on a website. Now, if you look at the extra time, trouble, and effort that it takes to produce something in a magazine, is that content inherently more valuable because it's in a magazine? Of course not. In fact, you could even say that the content is less valid because when it's something's in a magazine, the conversation is between the author of the article and the reader, and that's it. Whereas, as we all know, having something on, on a website, the blog, the, the collective wisdom of the interesting parties within a blog makes the whole idea more valuable and more, and more worthwhile. And that's, some, that's something that, uh, that, that print has a problem with. And that's, that's the issue with print, because print today seems to be a, a, a one-way transmission tool when we're living in a, in a two-way, bi-directional world. So is that all bad for print? Does that mean print is dead, like so many people would tell us? Well, no, of course not. Print's not dead. It's, it's simply evolving. In the old days, print pretty much had it to themselves. If you were a brand, you pretty much had three different ways to actually communicate to your customers. You had TV and radio, you had uh, newspapers and magazines, and you had um, uh, billboards and um, direct mail. Now obviously out of those three, already two-thirds of those are print-centric, 66% of those things. Today, print has to share its, its, its worth to its customers with so many other different vehicles. Uh, and that's the, that's, that's the issue really uh, with print today, that marketers today have a much greater choice on how they're actually going to communicate and engage with their customers. And print is just simply one of those choices. Now, allow me to let you into a secret, if, if you didn't know already. It's actually not that hard to print anything nowadays. The difference in quality between the world's best printing company and the world's worst printing company is actually quite small, and getting smaller every day, every month, anyway, because of technology. Technology is enabling the quality of the print to go up, generally speaking. And yet, you know, it used to be a case where it was all about education and experience and knowing things like UCR and GCR. It's still prone to disappointment. What it, what it means is that you can't take one file and print to any particular output device. The file needs to be massaged. It needs to be manipulated. It needs to be, sometimes it needs to be recreated for the particular print process, whether you're going to a digital device or uh, you're going to uh, sheet. Uh, offset or uh, web offset, Profure, Flexo, wh whatever those print processes are. And since we've already, as we've already established, print needs to play nicer, if you like, with these other avenues of content uh, broadcast, there needs to be a way of, of, uh, of, of developing a fast, accurate, and reproducible result, regardless of the output device concerned. Because at the end of the day, the output device is secondary. The whole point of it is to actually communicate the content. So why, why shouldn't it be that way? Why shouldn't we be able to just hit Control P, Apple P, and have that file appear in the way that we're expecting it to appear, regardless of the output device, whether we're talking about a virtual device or whether we're talking about a, a digital printing device or whether we're talking about an analog printing device. And that's exactly what we're doing here at CGS, and this is what we're going to show you in a little, little scenario um, that we put together here. Um, and, and that's that's primarily what, what we're talking about. I mean, hey, you know, if you're a, if you're a brand, if you're a designer, then you've probably come across a situation where you've printed something out, um, and you're quite happy with it. Client's very happy with it, but in terms of what uh, the way it looks in print, as there's little relationship to the proofs that you've been circulating in, internally. 
And then even then, that's just a snapshot of a particular device, and it doesn't necessarily correspond to another device. If you have a proof up from a, another digital print device or an analog device, there again, the whole thing changes yet again. So, since today's campaigns now embrace a wide range of different output devices, there needs to be a way of controlling that, to manage all of that, so that there is a control and everybody's working within the same color reference point, that same standard, so that when one device talks about a Coca-Cola red, or a McDonald's gold, or a Barclays Bank blue, then it appears the same no matter what device we're talking about. The issue is that you, you, need to make sure, you need to make sure that the uh, that the colour that you're that you're expecting is what is the is the colour that you're actually going to get. There needs to be consistency. You need to make sure that the, the final print job, the final print of that job looks exactly the same as the first one. And it needs to be reachable. It needs to be reducible. Like that. Uh, you need to be able to revisit that campaign one day, one month, one year later, and not be the surprised at the result. <coughs> And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little, a little scenario here, um, with ably assisted by my colleague here, Bert. Say hello, Bert. Say hello to Bert, please. Hello, Bert. Hello, Bert. Hello, Bert. Okay. So the, the, the start of the demo, we're showing a product here called Oris Approve. Oris Approve is a way to uh, interactively collaborate um, and approve and soft-proof content uh, remotely from a standard web connection. So rather than actually print out files, print out print outs and ship them out, or if, so what we need to do is create a, an environment which allows brands to interact with their customers in a color safe environment, a color predictable environment, accurate environment, independent of the actual output device. And that's primarily what we're showing at, CG, at CGS today. Um, that's the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions or you'd like to know a little bit more about how solutions can work within your company, Please do not come and see me, but do come and see the Hans or any number of the, uh, the CGS personnel here who will be more than happy to help you. Thank you very much.